Yeah, that's right. That's right. You did receive that feedback. Mm -hmm. One thing I love the most about StarCraft is when a new expansion or a new big change comes through, it feels like playing a different game with same units. Welcome everyone, new community update has just been released fresh two hours ago, right from the oven, basically. They released a new one, I'm not sure if this is the final one, if it's replacing the previous one, if it's addition to the already existing ones they had, I guess we're about to find out. Twitch people say hi to YouTube, YouTube say hi to Twitch people, come on, you guys are like siblings okay you gotta love each other uh hey everyone over the past month we featured two sets of possible changes in the testing tab after just digesting all the discussion and feedback we're ready to announce the final set of changes in the upcoming balance update these changes will be updated to the balance test mod later today and the final set of changes will go live on ladder on august 20th the start of season three that's in two weeks before we reveal the final list of changes, we'd like to go over some of the changes we decided to not move forward with. War Prism no longer starts with yada yada 11 second warp in. Okay, so this is great. I mean, this is this was a terrible change. I'm glad they... Uh... Oh, 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 sorry about that. Professional streamer, by the way. So they decided to not go through this change. Thank you guys for letting me know, by the way. Uh, which, I mean, it was a bad change. The War Prism would be completely useless, so I'm really glad they... Uh... Yeah, professional, professional, thank you. Uh, so I'm really glad they they did not go through with this one. We saw a lot of constructive uh, discussions surrounding the propose, this proposal and believe a change along these lines could have a lot of interesting consequences. <laughs> interesting consequences, yeah. Uh, however, we felt the impact of the change using the numbers proposed would be too great especially for a mid-year patch. Zealot charge additional impact damage for decrease from eight to zero. After researching charge, Zealots will still retain the ability to always hit a flame target at least once. This change were, was originally proposed to address multiple concerns such as the potency of all ends in PVZ, the frontal pushing power of the Protoss army, especially in PVT, and the overall potential for harassment when used with war prisms. However, after further consideration, we now believe the total Totality of the remaining changes proposed are sufficient to address these concerns for now. We did it boys, two out of two. We were fighting for is for this change not to go through and this change to not go through. Very nice, good job everyone. You did it, we did it. Okay, new change, Infested Terran. Infested Terran rockets weapon cooldown decreased, in, wait, cooldown increased from 0.95 to 114. Someone, t what, what is this in percentage? Is that like, 15, 20%? No, it's less, right? It's 12%. How much is it? Yeah, but basically they're increasing the time between each attack. 18%, 20%? Okay, so that's that's a, I mean, it's a nerf. It's a nerf. Uh, in the last community update, we proposed fixing a bug which allowed infested rockets to ignore armor. This was, okay, I'm not even gonna try to read that. Oh, a different proposal from a previous update to decrease infested rockets attack damage from 14 to 12. Though these ch two changes are comparable, the bug fix is a much greater hit to the infested rockets effectiveness against naturally high armored units. Following this last update, we received a national feedback that even with the bug fix, infested terrors would be still too powerful against Protoss late game armies. Yeah, that's right. That's right, you did receive that feedback. Mm -hmm. While we consider going forward with both the bug fix and the damage decrease, we thought the combination would synergize too much at weakening their damage output against high armored air units. And while this is desirable to some extent, our primary intention was to temper the infested Terran strength against interceptors. Thus, we'd like to go with an approximate 20% weapon cooldown increase, which would more evenly reduce the infested Terran's effectiveness against all air units. This brings us to our final list of changes. We did it, boys. They did it. Another nerf to the Infested Terrans. Now, it seems that they're very focused on carrier-Infested Terran interaction. I mean, that's fine. I do think that their attack speed was too high, right? So instead of uh, Infested doing like five, six shots, it's going to do one less, right? I mean, that's, that's great, right? It's obviously a nerf, and they're also fixing the... 
uh, bug where basically the bug for those who don't know I mentioned this in uh, previous community updates there was a bug where infested Terrans when they're shooting air they ignored armor so if they had 14 damage and they attacked battlecruisers with 5 armor it still did 14 damage so they're fixing that plus they're nerfing the, the attack speed making it slower this is something that honestly I, I'm happy because it's a nerf to the infestors which is something I've been saying for, for months that needs to be nerfed will this be enough? It, it, it definitely obviously will help. It's a huge nerf to the infested Terrans, especially the, the armor bug fixing thing. I don't know if this will be enough for Protoss's professional Protoss players to be like, okay, I'll go late game, to, to willingly go into the late game and play the late game. Because if the Protoss is forced in there, right? Like the Protoss tries to kill the Zerg, they don't manage and the game goes on. This is a welcome buff, right? But is this enough for Protoss to be like, okay, my strategy, is to expand, get a third, get a fourth, and go late game. That's something we're gonna have to wait and see because this is one of those changes where it's not as obvious how it will play out in the long run, how it will play out in the games, because this is something that, again, investors and infested terrans get masked, you know, with the carrier change as well for interceptors to uh, build faster. This is something we're gonna have to see, but obviously it's a, it's a step in the right direction. Final list of changes. Terran, Stimpak upgrade research duration from 121 to 100. So they're going through with this one, which I find very interesting. Uh, I discussed this one. Like I said, I, I think this just promotes two base all ins. I, I might be completely wrong. I'm sure people will be playing around with three racks openers, but I don't I don't see it being that great. This is what might happen. Protoss might start opening sent like stalker sentry against Terran and then uh, having hallucinated scout to see what the Terran is doing. And if they're opening blink, if they see that it's three barracks, they can just go with stalkers across the map. And as you're pushing across the map without medevacs, because you're going through racks, it's supposed to be like a stem shields timing with no medevacs into medevacs later on. The Protoss will just pick off so many units with blink. The only time this is this will be good, the three racks opener, is when the Protoss doesn't know what you're doing. But they can count the marines, how many marines you have, or they can just go sentry and hallucinate an oracle or a phoenix and see that it's three racks they don't need to worry about anything in their main base maybe warp a couple of sentries and if you're doing a three racks opener it's very very all-in opener you're delaying your tech so much you're delaying your third because you're going to full-on army production much earlier like i said i don't think this will make it so that people are suddenly opening three racks maybe they're gonna do two one one against protoss but definitely, I think this, more than anything, will promote stronger two-base all-ins in, in TVP. Because for two-base all-ins, the important part isn't the stim pack finishing 21 seconds earlier. It's that the combat shields finishes 21 seconds earlier. That's the big thing. So that all-in will be arriving 21 seconds earlier, which is quite big. I think that's what this change is going to do. But again, I might be wrong. We'll see. Uh, I don't think it will affect the other matchups that much. Maybe TVZ will be able to put on pressure a bit earlier. Again, I don't think it's a game breaking. TVT, same thing. New upgrade, enhanced shockwaves, increase the radius of Ghost's EMP round from 1.5 to 2. So this is the EMP upgrade. They're going through with it. It's not something you're going to be able to rush. I mean, you still need to upgrade it uh, and you're probably going to want to upgrade. Well, not probably actually. You might be upgrading this over Cloak first. So we'll see how it plays out. Is it is it good? Will Terrans use it in the you know late game when you're maxed out and have resources? Sure. Are people going to rush it? No. But this will help actually quite a bit against Infestors, which I'm happy about. Zerg, Overlord, Overseer, Nomadized Carapace Upgrade, a research cost decreased from 100, 100 to 75, 75. This is something they said they want to, to help the Zerg scout easier to know what they're dealing with. And this is kind of like their way of promoting scouting by reducing the cost of the upgrade. Will this break the game? No. Will it help the Zerg? Sure. It's a couple of trips with drones, right? To to mine that, ex that or a couple of uh, trips less to get to 75 instead of 100 gas. So I'm sure Zergs are happy about it, but at least they're being careful. They're not, they wanted to put it initially on 50-50. So I think 50-50 is like a little bit too much. Like, I mean, it's like free. Infested Terran, Infested Rockets, cooldown. Okay, so this is the weapon attack speed we just talked about. And then bug fix, Infested Terran Rockets, weapon will no longer ignore armor. 
Now, one thing that I personally don't think is a problem, but a lot of people did complain and didn't like, is that Nidus Worm is being untouched. Uh, a lot of people had problem with Nidus Worm being super cheap and very, very spammable in mid to late game, which kind of no repercussions. And it's interesting that, you know, Blizzard's not really mentioning it or doing anything about it, but hey. And the last one, Protoss. Protoss War Prism cost increased from 200 to 250 minerals. War Prism pickup range decreased from 6 to 5. So again, this is something that we've discussed. This is the changes we've seen already. So 200 to 250, it's a nerf. I don't think Protosses will quit the game over this, but it is a nerf to War Prism. War Prism is extremely, extremely powerful unit, so people will still make it. You know, no one's gonna give up on making War Prisms. War Prism pickup range, now this is something that I've discussed and this is something that I personally try to push for. This and the Infested Terrans and the Carriers are the three things I try to push the most when talking to Blizzard. And they finally nerfed the pickup range from six uh, to five. I think against Zerg specifically, it's it's it, it becomes ridiculous in certain situations. I'm sure we've all seen where four immortals kill like 30 roaches uh, with with juggling or two base all ins with immortal juggling and queens not being able to touch the war prism. I think that's just meh, and uh, I think that's a good change. Carrier Interceptor build time from 11 to 9. Now, again, this is a buff. They're trying to make PvZ late game more playable. If this was the only change they were doing to Carriers or to Protoss late game uh, or PvZ late game, I would say this is not enough. But together with Infested Terrans getting nerfed and bug fixed, plus this buff, again, something that we need to play, uh, test out, get to those late game situations, see the, how pro players play and if that kind of imbalance in the late game is not as bad anymore. So we'll see. I think that if in case that the PZ late game is still bad, I honestly think just making Interceptor to like seven seconds, it used to be six, the old carrier. Making it seven seconds or something like that would probably fix it. Or maybe even eight first, I don't know. But we'll have to wait and see. Next is Strategic Recall cooldown, increased from 85 to 130. This is something that every Terran player is probably extremely happy about. There's probably nothing more frustrating when you're playing TVP and you drop and they recall, and then you drop again like a minute later and they have recall again, and you're just like, why is there no cooldown on this? PVP, sure it affects it, but it's a mirror matchup. PVZ, you don't really recall too much, maybe you recall you know, uh, an Oracle early game against an all-in or, or a Prism uh, when it's stuck behind Zerg base, but this is mostly for, for TVP. Now, the one suggestion I had uh, that I would have made personally is I would have made Recall free to use, no energy, but the cooldown would be increased. So it's kind of like a, it's a nerf, but at the same time, you know, you're helping out products a little bit, but hey. It is what it is. The remaining changes proposed over the last month have generally been well received and we're confident in moving forward with this finalized list. As always, we thank you for your val valuable continued feedback. We'll see you on the ladder. So what do I have to say about this overall? I think it's a good patch. I think that the things that they have targeted are the things that are probably the most critical in the game right now that, that needed addressing. So I'm, I'm happy about those things. I, I would have probably changed a thing or two, like the, the values maybe or something, but overall I think this is a good patch. <clears throat> I think it shows that they are listening to what people are complaining about. This, th these two are a little, uh, a little bit of a surprise uh, changes, I would say. I don't think anyone was going for this and asking for this. For, for these two, but again, Terrans won't be too too upset. One thing I love the most about StarCraft is when a new expansion or a new big change comes through, it feels like playing a different game with same units. My favorite time whenever I play StarCraft is at the beginning of every expansion or beta because all the units are new, all the units are different, everything's different, build orders are different, play styles are different. So this is, you know, it's it's mid-year, right? It's it's uh, August right now, obviously a little bit over halfway into the year. So obviously they can't make any insane changes, but I really, really hope that for BlizzCon patch, they change things, but not balance, they change design. 
This is something I've, I went on about a bajillion times in my stream. I think that Blizzard, this is how other games do it, whether it's RTS or, or Battle Royale or FPS or whatever, MOBA. They need to do more design changes. I mean, even though I hate Ravens the way they are right now, I think that was a design change. They changed the unit completely. And I really hope that for BlizzCon patch, they change, uh, you know, the way Thors work or the way Void Rays work or something, right? Because that would make the game fresh again. Uh, it would bring back a lot of the players and the game would just feel new, even though it's a 10-year-old game. So I, I would love to see something like that, you know, them doing something to, for example, to change swarm hosts, maybe change ravens, change thors, change void rays, you know, give void rays something. I don't know what, but change them, change them completely. Make them a flying unit, but I don't know, they do something different. Uh, another thing I would love if Blizzard did is take away the abilities and put in new abilities. So in, for example, take away ghost snipe, but bring it back, give it something else or take away EMP and give it something else. I, I personally would love that. That would make the game again fresh, new. The game would be fun. I think that BlizzCon, after BlizzCon patch, because there's like a two, three month delay till the next tournament, I think that's the time to experiment. And I think that StarCraft before was a super serious uh, competitive game and it still is. And you couldn't make these drastic changes but we're 10 years into StarCraft 2, and I think in order to bring back the old players, something like this needs to be done, and it would help the game quite a bit. Uh, obviously, I'm not saying make the game imbalanced, just change the game design. Go back to six workers in economy, you know, to something. I would love to see that. But that is it for the community update. Let me know in the chat, boys, Twitch chat, boys, what do you guys think? And also you guys on YouTube, let me know in the comments below what you think about all of this. What would you change? What would you keep? What do you hate? What do you love? Again, say hi to YouTube. YouTube, say hi to Twitch. This is it for now. For you guys on Twitch, we're continuing. For you guys on YouTube, have a good one.